Dragons, Father and Son, written by Alexandra Lokoix, illustrated by Ronan Battle. Once upon a time, there was a little dragon called Drake. He lived with his father in a cave at the bottom of a deep-sided valley. One day, Drake's father told him, "Listen, son." You are a big boy now. It's time you behaved like a real dragon. Tomorrow, you will go to the village on the other side of the mountains, where you will burn a few houses. But why? Asked Drake. It's a tradition. Rumbled his dad. Do you want to be a dragon or not? That night, Drake struggled to sleep. Tossing and turning in the straw of his cave, he had hardly ever breathed fire, and only to grill himself a small slug or caterpillar as a snack. But burn a house? No way. The following morning, Drake flew off to the village where the humans lived. He spotted a little house on its own, with walls made of wood. This will make a fine place, he thought. But just as he was taking a deep, deep breath to set the front of building a light, Drake saw a little boy appear through the front door. Wow! A dragon! The child cried out. Aren't you scared of me? Drake asked. No way! I've never seen a dragon before. I'm pleased to see you really do exist. But you do realize I was about to set your house on fire. Burn down my house? Why? My dad calls it tradition. Hmm. I see. And if you don't do what he says, will you be told off? Drake nodded. The little boy thought for a moment, then announced. I have an idea. If you want a big place, I know just the place. The little boy led Drake to a square building in the center of the village. There you go, he said. You can set these old walls on fire. But what is this place? This is my school, answered the boy a little sheepishly. I haven't done my homework. If you burn the school down, I will owe you a favor. I see," said the dragon, who had never been to school and was not sure he fully understood. Once again, Drake took a deep, deep breath. Smoke was already coming out of his nostrils when a woman appeared on the front steps. It was the teacher. Wait, young dragon! You can't do that! She cried. And why not? Because the children who come here every day are your biggest admirers. She answered mischievously. I read to them about the legends of your renowned ancestors, and they really loved it. They also like to draw dragons. Stay there. I will show you. The teacher came back a moment later with a large drawing. "Do you like it?" she asked. "Please take it. It's a gift." On the drawing, Drake saw a majestic dragon, as red as a tomato, with a neck in the shape of an S and teeth as sharp as an axe. "Thank you. That's very kind, but I'm on a mission." The little dragon explained, "Yesterday, my dad asked me to burn the house down." The teacher thought about this and said, "Why don't you go to the riverside? There is an abandoned shack there, which could do the trick." By the river, Drake did find a shack, sheltered beside a huge rock. For the third time that day, he took a deep. Deep breath. 
He was about to produce a huge spray of fire when the old man sitting nearby on the bank put his fishing rod down and spoke to him. Ah,、oh, you couldn't have come at a better time," the old man told him. "You see, I caught twelve magnificent trout, but I haven't got a single match. If you help me cook my lunch, I promise you a feast that you won't forget." "Why not?" agreed Drake, who was a little hungry. The fisherman. Who kept a few things in the old shack went inside to look for a bag of coal and a barbecue on wheels. Drake blew over the coal, sparking long flames which roasted the fish. With their feet soaking in the river, they enjoyed a delicious meal. When Drake flew home, the little dragon's father was waiting impatiently for him. So tell me everything, Drake. What did you do? I hope that you burned down the village. Well, as it happens, I didn't burn down a single house. Why not? cried his father. Because I didn't want to upset the villagers. They were all really kind to me. Hearing this, Drake's father exploded with anger. "What is this? Making friends with humans? What's going to become of us if they no longer fear us? They are ferocious creatures." "No, Dad, you are wrong. Look at the gift they gave me." And Drake showed him the drawing. "What is it? It's a portrait of you, of course." You are their biggest hero," said Drake, who had learned a lot from the humans about being smart. Drake's father had to admit, the portrait was quite magnificent. Across his face, a small, proud smile appeared. Perhaps it was better to be admired than feared, after all. The end. Thanks for reading with me today. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Long 爸爸和龙儿子。从前有一条小龙叫德雷克，他和爸爸住在陡峭的峡谷下面的一个洞穴里。有一天，德雷克的爸爸告诉他：“听着，儿子，你是个大孩子了，该是你表现一条真正的龙的时候了。”明天你去山那边的村子里，在那里你要烧掉几座房子。但是为什么呢？德雷克问。这是传统，龙爸爸咆哮着。你是想当龙还是不想当龙？那个晚上，德雷克在他的洞穴里的稻草上翻来覆去睡不着，他几乎从未喷过火。仅仅烧过一个小鼻涕虫或毛毛虫来给他当零食，要去烧房子，没门儿。第二天早晨，德雷克飞到村民们住的村庄，他看到了一座小小的、单独的房子，四面都是木头，这很适合着火，他想着。但是就在他深吸一口气，准备把这座摇摇欲坠的房子变成灰烬的时候，德雷克看到一个小男孩从前门出来。“哇，一条龙！”小男孩叫起来。“你不害怕我吗？”德雷克问。“怎么可能？我从未见过龙。我太高兴看见你了，你是真实存在的。”“但是你知道。”我要把你的房子烧掉吗？烧掉我的房子啊？为什么？我爸爸说这是传统。嗯，我知道了。如果你不照做的话，你会挨骂吗？德雷克点点头。小男孩想了一会儿，然后宣布：“我有一个主意。如果你想要很大的火焰的话，我知道一个好地方。”小男孩带着德雷克来到村中央的一个方形建筑。
就是这里。他说：“你可以喷火烧这些老房子了。”可是这是哪里呢？这是我的学校。男孩回答，有点羞怯的。我还没做完我的作业。如果你把学校烧了，我欠你一个人情。我明白了，德里克说。他从未去过学校，不知道他是否完全明白小男孩说的话。再一次的，德里克深深吸了一口气，烟雾已经从他的鼻孔里冒出来了。这时，一个女人从前门的台阶上出现了，她是老师。等一下，小龙，你不可以这么做！他叫着。为什么呢？因为每天每一个来这里的孩子都是你最大的崇拜者。他带着俏皮的口气说：“我给他们读关于你著名的祖先的传奇故事，他们非常喜欢。他们还喜欢画龙。等着，我拿给你看。”一会儿功夫，老师出来了。拿着一幅巨大的画，你喜欢吗？他问。请拿走吧，这是给你的礼物。在这幅画上，德雷克看到了一个雄伟的巨龙，跟西红柿一样红，脖子弯扭的像 S， 牙齿跟斧头一样锋利。谢谢你的好心，但是我有任务在身，德雷克解释说。昨天我爸爸让我烧一座房子。老师想了一会儿说：“为什么你不去河边呢？那里有一个被人丢弃的窝棚，他可以帮你完成任务。”在河边，德雷克确实看到了一个窝棚，倚在巨大的岩石边。第三次，他深深地吸了一口气。就在他准备喷出巨大的火焰的时候，一个坐在水边的老人把鱼竿放下，对他说：“啊，你来的正是时候。”老人告诉他：“你看，我钓了十二条肥硕的鳟鱼，但是我连一根火柴也没有。如果你帮我烧午饭，我保证给你一个你永远也不会忘记的盛宴。”为什么不呢？德雷克同意了，他也有点饿了。那个渔夫在窝棚里留了一些东西，进去拿了一袋煤炭和一个带轮子的烤炉。德雷克朝着煤炭喷火，飞舞的火花烤了那些鱼。他们把脚泡在水里，享用了美味的午餐。当德雷克飞回家的时候，小龙的爸爸正不耐烦地等着他。好吧。告诉我发生的一切，德雷克，你都干了些什么？我但愿你烧了整个村庄。嗯，事实上我没有烧任何一座房子。为什么没有？他爸爸喊着。因为我不想让村民们伤心，他们都对我特别友好。听到这些，德雷克的爸爸带着怒气爆发了。这是什么？跟人类交朋友？如果他们不再害怕我们，那我们都成什么了？他们是可怕的生物。不，爸爸，你错了。看看他们给我的礼物。德雷克给他看了画，这是什么？这是你的画像，毫无疑问，你是他们最大的英雄。德雷克说，他已经跟人类学了，变得聪明。德雷克的爸爸不得不承认，画像上的龙很雄伟。他的脸上露出了一丝骄傲的微笑。也许终究让别人崇敬你，比害怕你要好得多。好，这里是小书虫，好书天天读，好书一起读。我们下次见。